Hi, this is Chadwick from Coffee Shopped, and in this video, I want to give you a tour of the different parts of the patch editors in Patch Base 3. There have been some fundamental changes to how things work between versions 2 and 3, as well as some new features added. So let's check them out. First off, I'll open up the app, and today I'll be demonstrating with the Korg mini log, so let me just open that editor up first. So the main controls in each editor for each synth are, of course, particular to that synth, but the parts around the edges of the controllers are common to all of the patch editors, so that's what I want to cover mostly. So on this screen, we see all of the controls for the mini log. We can change the oscillator, the filters, the envelopes, etc. But before I make any changes to the controls, I'd like to see what the controls are set to on the mini log itself. So to do that, I'll tap the fetch button. And now we see that the polylog preset sound is loaded into the editor. So now, as you can see, the controls have all updated to match the settings on the mini log. Now, if I make changes and then play some notes, you can hear the changes as I make them. So that's, that's the default sound. Now if I try changing, say, the filter. Turn up the resonance some. Maybe change the oscillators. So let's say I'm happy with those changes that I've made, and I consider this a new sound that I've created. I can save that sound to a couple of different places. First, I can save the sound to my iPad, then it will be stored as a file that I can use later, or that I can send to someone else, etc. To do that, I'll open up the file browser, and before I save the sound, let me give it a name. Let's be boring today and just call this New Sound 1. So I just tap in the name area there, rename it. And there we have it. Now, I just tap the save button at the bottom of the browser, and the saved sound is added to my list of sounds. If I scroll down, now we see new sound one here. And I select it. And there we have it. This tab in the browser is called the Patches tab, and it holds all of the patches that we save on the iPad itself. You can make folders to organize your sounds too, which you can see I've made a couple up here. So that helps you organize your sounds. The other place I can save this sound is directly to the synth itself. Now this is a new feature in Patch Bass where you can save your sound directly to a memory slot on the synth. To do this, I go over to the Synth tab and I tap on Voice Bank to see what's currently saved on the synth. Now, please note that uh, right now Patchbase knows what's saved on the synth only because I already downloaded the current synth bank into Patchbase. I cover how to do that in the bank editor video, so please check that out as well. Anyway, if I want to save my new sound one to the synth, I just tap the save icon at the bottom here. Now, Patchbase waits for me to select where I want to save the sound. Let's save it into slot 101 since that's only holding a blank sound right now. So I scroll down, you can see 101 says init program. So now if I just select that and tap save, now my new sound one is saved to the synth. So the browser is what you use to save your sounds, but it's also what you use to load sounds to edit. If I want to load a sound from the synth, I can just scroll up and then tap on it. So for instance, if I choose sweep lead, I just tap on that. Now I'll try playing some notes. Or maybe let's try rhino bass. You can do the same thing on the patches tab if instead you want to load a sound that's been saved on your iPad. For instance, if I load Bubbly Fly here, the middle tab, Banks, shows me a list of all the bank files that I have saved on my iPad. They're saved as entire banks, but I can select a bank and see what sounds are inside of it and load them. 
So right now I'm looking inside of this file called first backup that was a full backup of all the sounds on the mini log. Uh, so just like with the other tabs, I can, I can just select a sound out of that and play it. Right now, bank files can only be loaded from in the browser, so you can't save a sound directly to a bank file using the browser. But you can do that with the bank editor, which again I cover in its own video. So that's the browser. Now let's get into what these buttons at the top right do. On the left, we have the undo button. This button will let us undo as many changes as we want. So for example, if I want to go back to the other sounds that I just tried out, I can just tap undo. And now I've gone back to bubble fly. If I tap undo again, back to rhino bass. And so on. Sweep lead. And of course, undo works for parameters as well. So like, let me try changing the filter cutoff on this sweep lead. And then if I want to go back to where it was before, I just tap undo. And you can see it jumped back. Similarly, there's a redo button on the right that will undo the undo. So if I hit redo, that cutoff change I just made will be back again. Next to the undo button, we have the fetch button, which will load the current patch from the synth like we did at the beginning of this demo. Next to that is the init button. It gives us a plain sound as a fresh starting point for a new sound. It's kind of like a big reset button. So if I tap that and play a note, you just get a really simple sawtooth wave. And of course, I can hit undo and go right back to the sound I had before. So now I'm back to sweep lead. The next button is random, which randomizes all of the parameters. You can tap that and listen and see if it's any good. And if not, tap it again. So. So as you can see, you can get a lot of weird sounds quickly that way. Here, it's worth pointing out a big difference with Patch Base 3. Your sound isn't saved to a file until you decide to save it, like we did a minute ago. In Patch Base 2, every time you hit random, you had a new saved file, but that generally meant you had a lot of files with worthless sounds in them. So now you can just hit random a bunch of times without getting a bunch of files. And with undo, you can always go back to where you were before you started experimenting. The last button next to redo is the send button. All that this button does is it sends the current patch that's loaded in patch base already back out to the synth again. This is useful when maybe you loaded a patch before your synth was turned on, or if you had to reset your synth, etc. You can just tap that button and your synth will be synced with the controls that you see in patch base. It's kind of like the fetch button, but working in the opposite direction. And moving on to the upper left, I've covered most of those buttons already. That piano icon opens and closes the in-app keyboard. The MIDI icon opens your MIDI settings, which I cover in the setup in intro video. The button on the right toggles the browser like we did earlier. And the button on the left toggles the editor tabs, which let you get to the other parts of the editor, which again are covered in some other videos. And of course, you can tap the back button to go back to the home screen. Another nice new feature of Patch Base 3 is that even when you exit an editor, your place is still saved. So if I just tap mini log again, I'm right back where I left off. All right, those are the basics of the brand new patch editor in Patch Base 3. Thanks for watching.